Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Miscavige, and this is another episode of Life After Scientology. And let me get right into it. Uh, but before I do, let me take, a, take care of a little business. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon or contribute to the ongoingness of this program, and even with a one-time donation with PayPal, you can see how to do that in the description uh, on this link. I think I said the right words. I'm a little bit commu- computer illiterate at my age, you know. I haven't learned the things a third grade kid would learn. But anyway, that business out of the way, basically I'm saying if you want to help, I'd appreciate it very much. So listen, today we have a program that, boy, I'll tell you, I, I don't know exactly how to to introduce this without making it seem smaller than it is because it, it's a real big deal. And I have Karen Carol. Karen Dela Courier on, which is your favorite guest and mine. Good morning, Karen. Hi, Ron. Hello, everybody. Can I just jump in and say that? E- yes, you can. These events of the way the cult of Scientology has tried to crush, crush, give a knockout punch to Valerie Haney, a girl trying to just have her day in court. Ron and I reminisced on it, and we realized he was in 42 years, I was in 40, 82 years of living and breathing the cult. We realized that there's one word we can shrink it down to, that the cult exercises, executes power. So the show is on the word power. That's right. And it is. Uh, this title was given not by us, but I think it was Time magazine. The Cult of Greed and Power. There it is. Matter of fact, Karen has the page there for you. That's it. And that's the, the cult exploding. Of greed and Power. It's interesting, yeah. in 1991, yeah. that Time Magazine got it. They are a dominant, seeking submissive, seeking, <laughs> seeking people to be subservient. They seek control, domination, power. So Ron and I wanted to kick this around and discuss um, why... The cult chooses power above all else, above compassion, helpfulness, benign, uh, empathy, uh, forgiveness. No, it only seeks power. Well, let me give you a couple cents worth to start off with, because Mm -hmm. you don't have to use power to actually control your people or keep them in the fold, as they would say. If you had a movement, a religion, uh, or anything, anything that you had a common purpose with people, if that purpose was high enough and beneficial to all, including the people who did it, and those people that if they affected with their movement, if you had a beneficial thing, you would expand like nobody's business. In the past, there have been religions that even with their own faults, because they had a a beneficial effect on people that they apply this to and a beneficial effect on the people who did it, they expanded and they didn't have to use power. Now, power is so insidious that many years ago, they used to talk about the ether in the universe and that the, the, the universe was filled with an ether. In Scientology, in the organization, and in anything to have to do with what they do, their technology, their organizational policies, that ether is filled with power. Everything they do is meant to control and use power to keep you under their thumb. That's my two cents worth. Well, all power isn't bad, like you were. You, you were describing negative power, anti yeah. misuse of power. Yep. I mean, one could use power to benefit the many. Yeah. Just do great things for 
the civilization, for a city, for a country, but it's anti-power or just gross dominating power. <laughs> and just, just to cover, like Ron, you and I lived in the sea organization for so long. The control over you, which is power over you, the time you wake up in the morning, how many hours you're permitted to sleep, even where you sleep, because you can be tossed and forced to not sleep in your bed, but go to pig's birthing. What time you eat, the allocation of allowing you only 15 minute meal break to eat. Yeah. It was down, down, where you report for muster three times a day, roll call. A senior hanging over your shoulder as to what you produced in the last hour, this kind of, it's suffocating control. And if you do not toe the line, punishments are horrendous. Horrendous. That, that's that's the whole point. Yeah. It, and it's called too gruesome. That's what they refer to it as. Now, you, it, it's been said in the past, well, the military has you fallout from musters and everything. Well, let me tell you something. I was in the United States Marine Corps. And it is true. There's a boot camp that you go through, which is pretty pretty tough but if you can last it out you you learn to be a disciplined person that was the biggest thing i got out of the marines and uh, it, i've applied that discipline my whole life to things that i've done and it's helped me but in the marine corps let's say you have a muster in the morning or you would report to your post in the morning and then all units would account for people who were there or people who weren't there the rest of the day you just did your job Nobody was pounding on you to get something done by a certain time. You were expected to do a job and you did it. Now, what was the punishment? Well, if you didn't do good, you didn't get promoted the next time. Okay. Uh, or maybe you were held in disfavor if you were always, you know, talking back to seniors and everything. And you, you were kind of ostracized by yourself. Nah, don't bother with him. He's a troublemaker. But that was it. That was it. You weren't forced to have an abortion if your wife got pregnant. You know, uh, you weren't forced to go in pig's birthing. The punishments are just so so many. I mean, why get into it? But we're getting into it. Go on, Karen. The power over you went right down to controlling your right to give birth. For 25 yeah. years, the cult controlled your right to procreate. And they coerced abortions for 25 years till the public till the internet boomed and facebook grew uh, just blogs and forums and, face, and the public outcry was so big that they knocked it off for pr reasons but they do it under the table anyway yeah you to see old you can't have a child but that's a power move we have the power to tell you whether you can have a baby or not do you see, yeah. it's, it's it, again, what we're, we're isolating this word power. Ron, David Mayo, who was a very senior tech terminal, someone I love dearly, who has passed, he came, he used to audit L. Ron Howard. He came out one night into a starry sky. They were just chatting socially. This wasn't session confidential priest penitent, you're just chatting. And Hubbard said to David Mayo, I just have an incredible lust for power and money. You know, I heard that exact statement from a you friend did? of mine from those days who worked in the franchise office. Now, that was an office that later changed to the mission holders office yes but yes. uh this friend of mine who was in a band i had in england at the time said that same same statement to me so i have a tendency to believe that that actually happened and it wasn't just somebody making it up what was the exact statement you heard that hubbard said tommy said to me one time he says you know ron he says hubbard once said i have this incredible lust for money and power that was the statement he made to me Oh, you just jogged my memory. 
the executive director international bill franks uh, went on recording he was doing shows with jeffrey podcasts and he was <laughs> they used to be invited up to hubbard's cabin on the apollo late at night hubbard would tell them nice stories a great storyteller and he told bill Franks, I've got this tremendous lust. So he said it numerous times. Huh. So, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's on the podcast. Bill didn't, this isn't, wasn't hearsay like I was told by David Mayo that he said that, that, that this is Bill being told by. So Hubbard admitted to a lust the word we use was lust, not desire. Yeah. Lust. Lust. <clears throat> Power. That is right. And well, David Miscavige, your son, has continued this. And I will tell you, you use the statement, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Tell me how you view your son's seeking power and utilizing power. Well, and I'll say this again. I've said it on many of my podcasts and interviews. David not, wasn't always the way he is now. I, I must say that. And I know people will argue with me and they say, no, he was a son of a bitch from the word go. Well, you weren't there. I was there from the moment he was born. And I saw him with ter tremendous case of asthma. And it was really the bane of his existence as a little kid. I'm the one that took him to the doctors all the time to get a shot. And I would try to come up with different ways to handle him. Mm. And uh, I can remember when I took him in for a session with a guy by the name of Frank Ogle. Frank gave him a session. He never had a tremendously bad asthmatic attack for the rest of the time he was living at home until he joined the Sea Org. So that having happened led me to think this is something that I really want to get my whole whole family involved in. Now, going back a little prior to that, as a little kid growing up, he had a tremendous sense of humor. He was smart as a whip. He was tough. I mean, we had a lot of good times together. He had achieved something that nobody else achieved with the winning of the tax exemption for the church in 1993. That gave him literally ultimate power. And the guy who said that, Lord Acton, he said back in the 1800s, an English uh, statesman, he was a member of the parliament, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I'm totally convinced this is what happened to David. So he has kept that mantra up and has used it with PIs following people, as I had PIs following me when I left the church, getting paid $10,000 a week, reporting on my every doing from morning till night. And all I wanted to do was get on with life. Mm -hmm. I had my family taken away from me. That's another use of power. None of them speak to me. That Nobody has spoken to me. My daughters, their children, my great-grandchildren who I've never met from them since 2012, and that's how he has used power to handle people, so-called handle. But the upshot of it is this. Had he not done that, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. <laughs> that's yeah. the kick around. In other words, I think the, the spiritual side of man is saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm not going to lay on the ground and let you kick me in the head. Maybe a little bit me more so because of my experience in the Marine Corps where you get a little tougher than you were before. Well, not a little bit, a lot tougher. So somebody does it to me. I say, you know what? I'm going to come after you. I'm going to do what I can. Do anything to expose you for what you've done to people. So does it work? Didn't work with me. All the hate sites they have on me, Karen, <laughs> I really don't care what they say. They can say what the hell everything they want. I'm going to continue doing this continue doing the other programs you do here. So you, you seem know, to you seem to think that power will work, 
But in the end, it'll come back and kick you in the head. They have tons of hate sites on me, but this gives me more friends. People write to me. 